Hello everyone and welcome to Azure API Management Self-Hosted Gateway. I am Vikram Reddy. In this video, I am going to talk about the problem with providing unified API management solution everywhere and how we can solve it by using API Management Self-Hosted Gateway. To understand the value of the Self-Hosted Gateway, first you need to understand the fundamentals of API management. As this diagram illustrates, API management provides an intermediary between the clients and the backend application and the data and also the API management offers some of the services such as providing self-service user onboarding. With these features, developer can learn about these APIs that provide documentation and code sample and they can test those APIs and share across the organization. API management creates a facade that hides the backends from the client. With this, whenever organization wants to migrate or move or re-architect their backend application, this can be done without impacting the client that uses these applications. And API management establishes a single point of entry, a front door for the backend applications. This API management intelligently routes the traffic from the clients to backend applications. It works with authentication, authorization, and also throttling the clients by providing flow of control. By providing services like this, API management solutions make our APIs more secure, more efficient and easier to use. Now let's talk about providing a unified API management solution everywhere. Let's see this diagram. Here is my API management solution deployed on a cloud one and also I have an application and the backend data and have another set of applications deployed on premises and final another set of applications deployed in another cloud two. And whenever the clients send a request to this on premises, the request goes via Cloud One API management to this on premises application. Whenever the client send it data to this Cloud One application, now the request goes to the API management in the Cloud One and the within the same network or the environment request goes to the application and the data. Now whenever the client requests the Cloud Two application, the request first goes to the Cloud One API management and then goes to Cloud Two application and the data. Now, if you can see, based on this diagram, even though API management supports all of these scenarios, it doesn't always be the best choice. For example, you can see the scenarios like this. What if a client is accessing on-premises application and data within the same corporate environment, but none of the traffic is allowed to leave this environment? This is a compliance requirement that some of the organization doesn't allow to leave the information outside of their corporate network. And the other scenarios, when a client access application data on the public cloud, why pay for bandwidth rates? For example, another client send a request to the cloud two here. The first the request goes to cloud one, then goes to the cloud two. So as we know, most of these uh, public clouds charges for the uh, data sent out of them in this scenario, it's charged by the two clouds. So even though these charges are small, but nobody wants to incur unnecessary charges. Now let's see another scenario. If the client and the backend services are in the same environment, such as when they are both on the on-premises, why incur the delay of going through the public cloud for the API management? Let's see the scenario. You can see whenever the client sends a request to the on-premises, the first the request goes to the cloud one, then go to the on-premises. In this case, I have the client and the backend applications, both are at the on-premises. So there is an unnecessary delay when the request is going via the cloud one. Even though the delay is very especially significant, after all, most corporate networks today, so needless latency is never a good idea. All of these three problems can be solved by using a single common approach that is API management self-hosted gateway. Let's talk about the self-hosted API management gateway scenario. Number one, running the self-hosted API management gateway in your own on-premises data center. When the on-premises clients interact with the on-premises backend applications without forcing this traffic through this cloud one, that is where this API management solution deployed. Self-hosted API management gateway deployed at on-premise solves the compliance requirements and also the network latency problem. The next scenario, running the self-hosted API management gateway in another cloud. In this diagram, clients interact with the cloud two. By deploying the self-hosted API management gateway at cloud two, the request directly goes to this cloud two without forcing through 
the cloud one. By using this one, the, the additional charge problem as well as network latency problem both can be solved. Using self-hosted gateway, you can discover, use and manage APIs across on-premises and the multi-cloud environment. The self-hosted gateway functionality is very similar to the gateway of Azure API management cloud service. Whenever the self-service, whenever the self-hosted gateway is running, it must be federated and communicated with the main cloud service. Let's discuss about the important aspects of the Azure self-hosted API management gateway. Gateway functionality of the Azure API management is packed in a Linux based container image. As it is a Docker image, it can be deployed either as a container or Kubernetes cluster. The self-hosted API management gateway requires only an outbound connection to the main cloud service it is federated with. As we have only outbound connection to the Azure API man cloud service, our API is more secure. By default, the self-hosted gateway does not have any local storage. The cloud service provides all the information a self-hosted gateway needs, such as the flow control policy for each API. And self-hosted gateway holds this in memory. If a self-hosted gateway fails, the information that self-hosted gateway get lost. To avoid this, a self-hosted gateway can optionally have a local persistent storage that holds this configuration and this is just a file. Now, let's talk about the demo. Demo, for the diagram, the demo infrastructure consists of one on-premises environment where my one of the backend service deployed. And there's another one you can see here. Uh, here I have used the Google Cloud to deploy my API and the self-hosted gateway. And here is the Azure API management that I use it to uh, configure the self-hosted gateway. And how the self-hosted gateway works basically. Whenever the client send a request to this self-hosted gateway endpoint, first it validates all this flow control of the request. It is actually a configuration is one way thing from the Azure API management to self-hosted gateway. Once this request is validated through the self-hosted gateway, it sends the request to the backend API. The same thing, the response will go to the client. If you can see in this diagram, orange indicates that ingress to that external uh, ingress, it is exposed publicly. And if you see this yellow ingress indicates internal ingress and exposed only within the containers. Uh, let me show you the demo parts of it. I have this. API management instance in Azure Cloud and this is the, uh, as discussed in the slide, this is my Google Cloud environment where this is the echo server is in my backend API and the gateway that I call self-hosted gateway that I configured is the APM gateway and I have the other on-premises environment. Uh, on-premises is uh, my uh, deployed on VMware ESXi server virtual machine where my on-premise environment Docker engine is running. You can see here, here are the two containers are running. This my this is my backend API running on this port 3000 and the same way my API management gateway running on the port that is 80. I'm going to show you the next step is like how the gateways are configured here. If you can see in these gateways, here is the on-premises gateway as this test is connected to one instance and the similarly my Google Cloud gateway is connected to this one instance it is up and running. Now let me show you this testing. So this is my another on-premises environment uh, VM where I can uh, acts like a client to access this APIs. Before that, I can show you like how the APIs are configured here. You can go to this APIs. Yeah, this is a self-hosted Google Cloud ga Gateway used API. If you can see inside the settings, you will see that I am using this. The backend service name I'm using is like a local name that can be resolved by the self-hosted gateway. And the gateways you can see here, the gate, Google Cloud API gateway that I configured here. Similarly for the on-premises also here. This is a backend endpoint that only understand by this, uh, this self-hosted gateway. It is, it is a private only accessible through on-premises. And this is the on-premises gateway that I configured here. Let me run these services and see. If you can see here, this is the IP address self-hosted gateway is running and then this is the prefix that I used from my configured in this Azure API management and this is my endpoint. Uh, 
If you can see here, I'm just not uh, providing this uh, authentication key, is subscription key and authorization header. And you can see, try to test it, you'll see that access denied due to missing the subscription key. This indicates that whenever, whenever the request is sent to the self-hosted gateway, it triggers all this Azure API management policy. So you can see here, when I'm just sending the subscription key, you'll see that it says JWT not present. It is meaning the authentication to cannot send through the API request. This also validated from the Azure API management. Let me show you where this uh, JWT validation policy is configured. You can go to this Azure API management, you'll see this uh, product, this is a starter project. Under the policies, I have configured this JWT validation. So this confirms that, okay, but whenever we send a request that it is that API management configuration syncs to this self-hosted gateway and self-hosted gateway validates our request according to the flow of control and then sends a response back to this client. When I send this authorization address, you'll see that I got the rest. I can simply change something to here. But if you can see, similarly, if, if you can see here is this GDA uh, cluster Google Cloud configured. And if you, if you can see here, I have this, this is the IP address of this my uh, Google Cloud self hosted case where I'm trying to hit the same thing. And this is the protection for the suffix I configure in the API management. Let me update the valid URL. Yeah, because uh, I, if, you, if you see this, I got the response saying that invalid subscription key because I used a wrong subscription key. Let me get the valid subscription key. Yep, I updated a valid subscription key. Now you'll see that the response I got that is welcome. That's all about the demo. Let me go back to the slide. Now, pick the references that I followed, these are the references that I followed to prepare this demo. Thank you very much.